Parliament in Wellington. When the cameras roll, politicians are among the most tricky interviewees there are. So we caught up with political editors Guy and Espina, One News, and Duncan Garner, Three News, about the slipperiest and sharpest parliamentarians to interview. I always find the bigger the player, the easier the interview, um, partly because whatever they say is going to be newsworthy. As for the truth, Madam Speaker, I don't think the member's in a strong position to be raising those allegations. Michael Cullen and Helen Clark both have among the strongest in- intellects in the place. You don't want to go into an interview um, with those guys um, unprepared. OK, I'll put three people, three people in there. Helen Clark, because she's over everything. It has got so much information so much knowledge. Michael Cullen, because mm. he's smart. Completely incapable of outlining a coherent position. Winston Peters will throw up his own challenges because he'll take you on as an interviewer and ask you questions, so you have to have a bit of a fallback position about how you're actually going to handle that. Uh, you know what I told you next night? OK, and you sit on... Are you slow learning or what? No. Look, go away, will you? You people in the media think you're going to hype this up by wasting your time. I wish you'd focus on a few factual <laughs> issues and not have a truth free zone. Oh, oh. Winston Peters, because he never answers the question. No, you actually want to say to him, Winston, would you please answer the question? <laughs> what are you hoping to get out of the talks today? Uh, well, I'll tell you when it's over. Are we going to be able to get a quick word with him there, do you think? How did your meeting go this morning? Very good. In our unscientific and anonymous poll of the press gallery, most reporters agreed. Winston's the slipperiest and Helen and Michael are the sharpest. As for the dullest and dimmest, we'll leave that up to you. Well, that's what the gallery thought. Sean, what about you? You talk to these people every day as well. Was that, was that roughly right? Yeah, I think uh, they, those three are certainly the more challenging of politicians. I'll tell you who we had real problems with, Jeff Robinson and I, was Don Brash. And I can remember after the first couple of times when he was leader of the opposition, we sat there and said, this is bizarre. We're asking him the questions and he's really genuinely trying to answer them. <laughs> uh, and we had to work out a whole new strategy to deal with that as interviewers <laughs> for politicians. Um, so he was one out of the box completely. Look, I still come back. It doesn't matter who the respondent is, who's sitting in the, in the chair opposite you or on the end of the phone line. What you're responsible for is coming... And look at that clip. You're responsible for coming up with really good questions. Winston Peters going up in the meeting. How'd the meeting go today? Very well, thank you. That's the only response that is required. Our job is to work harder on the good questions. Hmm. You've had the odd dust up with them, though. All, no, all absolutely, of those people. Absolutely. You but know, equally, you, you... I, I mean, equally, uh, I would be uh, lying if I didn't say sometimes those ones that are dust-ups are great entertainment and, and they're the good sport. fun. Mm. And, and I quite do quite enjoy the sport of it, and I guess that's, that's why I do it for a job. Mm. Amanda, who are your toughies? Tough ones for me, you know, it's bizarre, but um, try getting a good interview out of a gang mm. member. And I think I've actually achieved or a to do that. Officer. A police officer. Yeah, exactly. police officers can just be appalled. Yeah, um, mm. I think they've had media training, and some of them have had bit, media training. The wrong kind of media training. <laughs> oh, right. That one where they're deliberately obstructive, where everybody can see they're being deliberately <laughs> obstructive. So why would you do that? Oh, yeah. proceeding in a northerly That's direction. Right. Five persons. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think actually, <laughs> could I put my hand up? The worst people to interview. Um, recalcitrant police officers. Yeah. Well, actually, we've got something rather different. We've talked about interviews on the home front, but perhaps now we could look abroad at this. And our less energy-intensive agriculture uh, actually means that we have a pretty favourable footprint vis-à-vis what's produced in Britain itself. It's on the face of it, it sounds fantastic. Look, we are going to be one of only four countries that might be carbon neutral. But there's a problem, though, which is that you are mining coal, but you're just exporting it. And you exported, what, two million tonnes of uh, coal last year? Oh, may well have. Uh, we do export coal. We export to India. We export to Japan. But that's the reason why it's so important to get an international consensus that gets everybody into the post-2012 Kyoto but, framework. But surely it's crazy. If you, you can't hold New Zealand up as a country that's doing all it can, it can and is going to be carbon neutral, but actually you're, at the same time, digging more and more coal out of the ground, but you're just giving it to somebody else. Who's going to create the problems with it? Well, not necessarily. That was Helen Clark being interviewed on BBC World's Hard Talk. It's a searching conversation that deals with ideas, and it's long. Jim, I get the feeling we're unlikely to see interviews of that kind with, say, either of the major political party leaders in this and election year. Is that a, is that a problem? Well, what you saw there were two, two things. One was good research, and the other one was persistence. 
I think that can be one of the weaknesses of, uh, of interviewers, where they, um, if they don't get the answer, then they move on to something else. Uh, what, what are the impacts there? I mean, one would think that, that with the availability of Google, uh, which is a world of information, that, that young journalists would now be able to go into interviews much better briefed. Is that the case, do you think? Uh, well, yeah, you'd think it would be, but it isn't, because they don't know what to brief themselves about. They don't have the background knowledge to even begin their research in a lot of cases. Uh, when I started teaching journalism, uh, my predecessor said anyone un over the age of 22 didn't want. I'm getting to the point now of anyone uh, who's, uh, who's under 22 uh, is, is a problem because they don't know enough about the world to, uh, to mm. be a good interview. And well, we see that all the time, yeah. sorry, yeah. Russell, in, in TV where these fabulously bright, attractive young faces come into the newsroom and they know nothing. And, yeah. and quite frankly, they'll go out on a job, they'll be given a list of questions for what we call pickups for news, and they'll just read this list and they will not put it in any context or ask any real So a solid base of information uh, that, that's there all the time. Yeah, life skills. And the ability to identify what it is you want from the interview. Yes. And generally, it's something you don't have the answer to, which is why you got the person sitting there and you're asking them the question. Well, and, 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 yeah, and, 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 and yeah. figuring out what the question is. Uh -huh. is often the most fundamental part you know, and you do thing, that long before you sit down yeah, and talk the to the other The one thing all eight told us, one thing was listen. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. With that, I'm afraid that's all, the time, all we've got time for. Thank you to our panellists, Sean, Amanda and Jim. Um, it's been most enjoyable and I hope we've shed some light on the subject of interviewing for you at home. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.